Welcome back, everybody. You got Will and I, man, here from the Block Runner, and today we're going to be talking about my neighbor Alice and its association. And Decentraland. Yeah, and Decentraland. That's true. Pretty much like the metaverse as a whole. It's like a a a, a direct. I don't even know what to call it, dude. It's pretty much been our lives for the last two years. Yeah, at least. <laughs> um, it's more like an obsession. You know, yeah, some, some would say. Crazy. Ever since we discovered it a couple of years ago, it started with Decentraland, right? Because my neighbor Alice did not exist a couple of years ago. That's correct. Decentraland was the prime example of what the metaverse could be. And he totally bought into the concept so heavily that we're, we are pretty much all in as far as like personal time investment goes. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so figuring out the ins and outs and like what, what's missing for the metaverse to become like this ubiquitous concept, like a household name and everyone's tongue just like <laughs> nfts and cryptocurrencies are nowadays right yeah like it's pretty i think in our minds at least at some point within the next two to three years metaverse is going to become as understood as like the internet yes know? yes at least that's what we're working for yes and we don't know how big it's going to get but i have a feeling that it's going to get much bigger than than the 1.4 billion dollar market cap right here yeah i was talking to, i was talking to will earlier like dude i don't even think we understand yeah. how big the metaverse is going to be like even though we spend most of our time thinking about it, I think even we like undersell it in some senses, you know, like, I think you're right. Yeah. Uh, just because if you really think about what it is, it's just, it's, it's the actualization of everything that crypto and blockchain has been building up until this point. Hmm. Yeah. At, applied to like an actual realm of existence. So it's, it's kind of difficult to apply this whole new tech uh, innovation to the physical world just because there's tons of resistance there right because the blockchain technology itself it's designed to disrupt and shake the foundations of like the, the traditional institutions we have in the physical world right so we build a virtual version of that where we can implant ourselves within which is called the metaverse we can apply all this blockchain technology financial services whatever the fuck else we're doing directly there and we have a much easier adoption cycle you know than we would in the physical world absolutely so. absolutely yeah and just kind of as hard as it is to project where the metaverse might go it, it was difficult to project where bitcoin was going to go in 2011 and 2012 yeah. um uh, if you watch our previous video talking about bitcoin it has transitioned in what was called in phases right in, in certain phases it was like we're going to use bitcoin to transact all over the world and all of a sudden that got expensive and to wait 30 minutes for your coffee that you bought with Bitcoin didn't make sense. Then it yeah. transitioned into, well, Bitcoin is a better version of gold. And once we passed $10 trillion Bitcoin, then it's going to be like, well, Bitcoin is actually going to be the foundation for how governments interact with each other and transact with each other. And it's going to be like $100 trillion. So it, it's hard to predict, you know, Bitcoin, where it was going and so early on, just like it is right now to, to figure out where the metaverse is going to be headed. Mm -hmm. And so let's let's try to establish some parallels with Decentraland and My Neighbor Alice. So My Neighbor Alice is a metaverse, very different than Decentraland, but it's, it's the first metaverse on the Binance Smart Chain. Mm -hmm. So if we look at the trajectory of, of uh, Decentraland right now, it peaked in 2017 at around a $300 million market cap, right? And that price was around 30 cents, 34, 24 cents here, 34 cents in other projects or uh, other exchanges, sorry. Mm -hmm. We have My Neighbor Alice here, and <coughs> this just launched on the Binance Launchpad. And mm -hmm. that is worth $281 million. Yeah, peaked out like somewhere around seven hundred million, like the initial FOMO of this release. Yes, you know? and that's that speaks more to the nature of like the, the strength of the Binance Launchpad ecosystem than anything. You know, it's just I think this is like a common trend with new projects. Like there's just this initial rush of excitement and like price discovery, and then at some point, you know, of course every project has early token holders, right? So like fuck, yeah. At some point, these people have to feel the pressure to like realize these gains, so they do. Yeah. <laughs> yeah they do and and they, like, yeah this it was, happens yeah it's a huge volume of sell-offs here but yeah. but imagine this sell-off occurred at around, uh, roughly 700 million dollars and it settled to its lowest point at around 200 million dollars 200 million dollars for a project that doesn't have a whole lot to show is really good and this is just an indication of the sentiment of the bull market right now yeah and the fact that you can exist and you could launch 
and, and, and raise enough funding and build a big enough community that, that potentially can can sustain you for the next three years, similar to what the Central Land did, right? It That's had right. A, a total bear, bear winter phase, dude, and we lived through most of it. Yes. You know, we discovered it during the, the heat of its winter. Yes. You know? <laughs> but fortunately, because of the bullish conditions of the, the bull market from 2017, <clears throat> this project, the Central Land Foundation, was able to raise enough funding and community backing to, to sustain themselves for the next cycle, you know? So yeah. my, that's that's really what my neighbor Alice's goal is today, right? It's to build that war chest, build that community, spend the next three, four years actually realizing it and executing. Yeah. So let's draw some parallels. So in uh, 2017, Decentraland raised $26 million in, uh, in an ICO, right? And in that ICO, they raised 86,000 Ether. So in today's price, this is around $170 million, right? Mm. But in uh, 2017... That was $26 million. So they raised $26 million in an ICO. And if you remember in 2017, it was just a grid of just parcels, like just a grid of 90,000 parcels. And you just bought, you clicked on a, on a link, you bought that parcel and that was it, right? There was yeah. no virtual world. You couldn't jump in and walk around. None of that. That was in 2017 and they raised $26 million. That's right. So, um, so they sold a vision essentially. Yeah, they sold a vision. They and so vision, they tokenized that vision and distributed it to a community of speculators. And then here we are. That's right. Four years later, the vision is reality. The central line is it's a real thing now. Yeah. <laughs> now the central line is one point four billion dollars. Yeah, exactly. That's the difference. And you know? so so now that parallel goes to my neighbor, Alice. What do they have right now? They have a proof of concept. You can uh, for for I, I guess early players in or the early community members in my neighbor Alice, you can jump in and download this game and start messing around with it. And mm -hmm. so they had a proof of concept. There's actual interaction with the community on a product level uh, when when they launched their token. Mm -hmm. So let's see. So they're worth right now roughly two hundred and eighty one million dollars with a proof of concept. So we're we're projecting that. Potentially, if we follow these cycles, these bear and boom cycles, that four years from now, it's not going to be, you're going to need more than just a proof of concept. You're going to need a proof of concept with like a thousand users. And yeah, some actual like uh, revenue within your game economy. Yes. You know? yes. Some proof that there's some actual economic activity happening in the metaverse, right? Absolutely. This is what you called it, the maturing of 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 the crypto market as a whole. We, we demand more from these projects now. We're perfectly fine with giving you guys millions of dollars to execute <laughs> on decisions, right? This is fine. This is an agreement between the speculators and the project founders, right? Yeah. But yeah, like four years ago, our, our, <clears throat> our threshold, I guess, our tolerance levels were much lower. Our expectations were, we didn't have any. Yeah. All, <laughs> so, all it was, was this, they had a video and yeah. in the video, they just showed people putting on a headset and just like building out this decentralized world, which which was very attractive. This is this garnered twenty six million dollars in an ICO public round. Yeah, but see, yeah, this is all concept, right? This is, yeah, this is pure concept. This does not uh, represent Decentraland at all. Yeah. And that's not to knock Decentraland in any way, because that was the entire blockchain ecosystem at the time. Everything was in concept phase. Yes. You know? Yes. Everybody was pitching conceptual ideas of, oh, we're building the next most scalable blockchain ever you've ever seen. You know, it's going to blow your fucking mind. Yeah. You know, so give us $100 million, please. Yeah. <laughs> and in a lot of cases, they got their $100 million. That's right. And today we're witnessing it. This is what our channel covers. We have tons of silos. It took them four years to build and execute and actually, you know, leverage the raising they, they got from four years ago. Yeah. So, so it's, it's working, dude. It's working. Yeah. And a lot of projects that did an ICO were not successful. And this project ended up building and actually deploying a decentralized world. And, and at the time, it, like you were saying, it just required a vision. Now it requires a vision plus a prototype. And yeah. that's where my neighbor Alice is right now. So at 281 million uh, market cap, this just represents the beginning of what potentially could be just another big multi-billion dollar metaverse. But in this case, it's going to be on Binance Smart Chain. So yeah, there's some core differences between these two metaverses, which is perfectly fine. You know, as far as like what the actual experience will be like, uh, it seems more fragmented in, mm -hmm. 
in my neighbor Alice's case, kind of like the sandbox, right? Where you you kind of you own these pieces of of the network of this metaverse, and you can construct whatever experience you want within the piece that you own. Mm -hmm. But it's not like this open world environment like Central Land, where we can just roam everything and interact with everything. You know, yeah, not necessarily that. I think it's going to be like you have to connect directly to these towns or to these islands. Yeah, via, via like a portal. So it yeah. depends on like it's hard to understand their vision because they they don't really talk about it. But it, I wonder if their vision is about creating an economy where people interact with each other because they have certain assets that or a certain game that they want to interact with. Yeah, I mean, clearly they're modeling after what's it called? Roblox? Uh, no, no, no. The other one that's real big right now, the, the farming simulator. Oh, uh, Animal Crossing. <laughs> Animal Crossing, yeah. yeah. It's very similar, right? But again, like these, these are good targets to have, just like Sandbox is targeting Roblox, which mm -hmm. is now a $35 billion thing. Yes. Animal Crossing is, is a monster in itself. So it makes sense to kind of like replicate these, these game models and to like blockchain it. Yeah. You know? Animal Crossing is basically uh, like a role playing game where you just build out your little land and you fish and you do all that, all that stuff, right? Yeah. And so if they if they leverage that same model but they NFT it and they make everything ownable, then this is going to be extremely successful because it's it's essentially the same mechanics. Yeah, in the, in the sense that, you know, people spend 8 hours a day, I know people who spend 8 hours a day playing Animal Crossing, you know, building these 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 spectacular, you know, places you, their friends can come and visit. And, and like, these are adults, right? These are adults. I don't I don't have children friends. <laughs> 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 my adult <laughs> friends do this yeah and like you know the whole purpose behind it is to flex like the creations that you've made but you didn't accrue any value right yes in this sense you could be doing the same exact thing however they decide to gamify it like you're spending your time collecting resources and building this portfolio of creation that you just made but it's actually backed by like real value yes you know other, other people will give you money for these creations right so now you're double flexing not not only do i have cool shit here it's a lot of money too. <laughs> yeah, you know I mean? yeah, for sure. Yeah. So yeah, now, well, yeah. yeah, they're they're on Binance Launchpad, and right now the pools, like for example, the CHR token, 147 million CHR tokens are being staked in order to earn Alice, and the total rewards is three million Alice tokens. That's a lot of money at sixteen dollars. No shit, dude. That's insane. Yeah. Actually, <laughs> when I first saw that, I couldn't believe it. So this is again another testament to the strength of Binance's um, community. Right. The, the hype right now that's around Alice. You know, people want to acquire these assets because they 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 think there's a future for it. And I agree in the sense that it's almost we're so early in the metaverse like life cycle that you can almost I I could bet that it's pretty difficult to miss in this sense. Like in the same sense that it was really hard to miss on like NFTs yeah. you could have acquired in 2017, right? If you would have bought any of those like OG NFTs today, everybody's paying top hundreds, dollar. Hundreds so, of thousands. Yeah. So right now, Metaverse is in that 2017 cycle, right? Yeah. We're just now getting like the early concepts out there. And so it's, it's I don't know, man. It, I think if I were to say anything, just spend some time paying attention to this stuff. Even if you don't like it, like from a conceptual level, you might think it's totally like super lame looking. Yeah, I you mean, know. just look at Decentraland. <laughs> this is this is what sold twenty six million dollars worth of users to to yeah. buy into this vision. To me personally, this is much of a sexier vision. Like, look at this. This looks like some kind of future society. Yeah, you know? yeah. That's you what know, Decentraland. My favorite, Alice, not my demographic. You know. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but again, like I said, there's niche. There's an infinite amount of niches you can create with the metaverse. Just like there's an infinite variance of web pages or applications you can build right it's just you know there's an audience for everything yeah absolutely uh just like we were going through projects projects that exist on ethereum but also are being copied on different chains like mm -hmm. we're going to start seeing a bunch of metaverses in a bunch of different chains oh, and, totally. and i think there's an opportunity to provide a service that allows for fundraising for these game developers for these different metaverses just mm. like Poka Starter is doing for projects, doing all kinds of stuff, right? DeFi, derivatives, you know, anything that you can think of. There's a location that has collected a bunch of eyeballs to do an uh, an IDO, and so we'll see um, 
how this shakes up, but this is only the beginning, right? We're going to see ton more metaverses spawning all over the place. And this is just one of them. Yeah. Like, yeah. Just like people were pumping out NFTs early days, there wasn't enough infrastructure in place for, for the market to really gravitate to them and speculate on them and understand the true value of them. We got, there's a lot of infrastructure ahead of us, essentially. So yeah, yeah, we're going to see more and more projects coming out and start getting listed and start building their own communities to kind of, you know, accelerate the adoption of the metaverse and us being one of them for sure. Yeah, for sure. So we'll, we'll have to explain in future videos what the hell we're talking about. But yeah, I wish I wish we can go back to the sentiment in 2017 when 30 cents uh, to Central Land was like a, a euphoric high. And then fast forward four years from that, from then, and looking at the the chart now, it's like <laughs> it's it's a stark difference between. Because imagine if this little peak right here that we're seeing an all time high for Decentraland was as high as this for the next four years, right? We're looking yeah. at a twenty thirty dollar mana token. Yeah, I mean, at some point, it potentially could get to that point. I think so. I think the metaverse, because if if the metaverse is fully realized the way I'm envisioning it to be. And we're going to have, like I said, infinite amount of renditions of what the metaverse can be. Just like there's an infinite possibility of what an NFT can be. Yeah. And Decentraland's always going to go down as like the OG. Yes. It is the crypto punk of metaverses. Yes. It is the original. Nothing will ever take that away from it. It could literally just be empty. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and like, it doesn't matter. Yeah. Right. Just because it was the first, that's the speculative value of it. You know, um, people... Right. I mean, land is going up significantly. There is like a CNBC interview. That's true. Yeah. Talk about it. You know what CNBC is? It's like the biggest finance, you know, media coverage platform in America. They're talking about virtual land as like a legitimate asset. Class yes, now. it is. <laughs> like an audience of like straight boomers, dude. Right. Yeah. <laughs> so we got people like in their 60s and 70s borderline about to retire. Mm-hmm. And like they're being told virtual land is the next big investment. You know, right, like right, what the right. fuck? And our predictions they're not they're not too crazy. I mean a twenty dollar mana is gonna be what is that? Fourteen, twenty eight billion dollar market cap. So sounds crazy today, but I it's mean, totally 50, possible. Fifty thousand our Bitcoin still sounds crazy to me, but yeah. <laughs> apparently we're not we're not stopping there, you know. So <sighs> All right we're guys. In, we're in the right space for sure. Yeah, hell yeah. So that's been the video. Let us know what you think about Decentraland and My Neighbor Alice. If you have more information, please share in the comments below. Make sure you like, subscribe, follow us on Twitter at TheBlockBurner and also at Metazone.io. And we will catch you in the next video. Peace.